wanted to do a quick video on drinking water because I've got a little background in it and it's something that you don't really see a lot of comprehensive information in one location uh, regarding this topic. So certainly I think most people know that drinking water is a lot healthier than soft drinks. High sugar content in soft drinks is even more unhealthy than you would imagine if you research it. Drinking water though has three main concerns that people raise and that's fluoride, chlorine, and low mineral content which doesn't get discussed as often. And rather than go into the long debate over fluoride and chlorine, uh, I'll just say that it's something that's generally not allowed in the water in Europe. It is put into the water here generally. Still a lot of debate on the topic and if you research it for 15 minutes yourself, you'll probably have researched it a lot more than the professionals out there who are advising you on this topic. Low mineral content, on the other hand, isn't discussed nearly as much and it's a big issue, especially if you use a home distillation or a reverse osmosis home treatment system and also a lot of municipal water tends to be very low in mineral content. Um, it hasn't been studied a lot, but low mineral content in the water has been linked, in my understanding, to a slightly higher rates of heart disease. It's true that today most people don't get a lot of minerals from their water, but if you were drinking spring water that had a reasonable mineral content or herbal teas, as many people did in the past, then you might be getting, let's say, 10 or 15 percent of various minerals from your water, and Minerals in water are absorbed by the body a lot more easily than minerals in your food. So if you're getting 10-20% of your mineral intake through the water, that might actually equal 20 or 30% of your actual mineral absorption. So it's kind of a big issue that nobody really considers. So I'll go over methods to remineralize water in a second, but first a quick review of the different home treatment systems that people use. The most common is an activated carbon filter and this is really only good at removing chlorine um, and a more expensive activated carbon system will remove chloramine. Nowadays a lot of municipalities are moving from chlorine to chloramine which is more difficult to remove so if that's a concern for you you would have to contact your municipality and find out if you have chloramine or the gaseous form chlorine. Chlorine will basically just volatilize off. You can put it in a pitcher in the refrigerator for a day or so and it'll be gone. Chloramine, on the other hand, you need a pretty good quality activated carbon filter to get rid of it or some other method such as uh, boiling the water for 20 minutes or putting uh, 50 milligrams or so of vitamin C in a gallon of water will also supposedly neutralize the chloramine. So that's activated carbon system. Um, the next most common system is a reverse osmosis system which always is sold in conjunction with an activated carbon system. The reverse osmosis will basically remove everything from your water. It'll remove the chlorine, the chloramine, the fluoride, and all of the minerals as well. And lastly, there's a distillers. This can be anything from a cheap little $100 uh, countertop distiller on up to more expensive systems that uh, treat a larger amount of water. Uh, the distillers aren't really certified to remove chloramine or, or chlorine. They will remove fluoride, um, but they also remove all of the minerals from your water. Uh, there are supposedly other companies which sell home treatment systems that they claim will remove fluoride, but in my understanding none of those are really certified by outside agencies, independent agencies. So for removing fluoride, one of the most difficult components to remove, you're pretty much stuck with either reverse osmosis or distillation, which removes all the other minerals as well. And of course that's just general guidance. Uh, if you were actually looking into buying a home treatment system, you would want to check with your municipality, find out if there are any other potential contaminants of concern, check with the manufacturer, make sure that the device is actually certified for whatever you are trying to remove from the water. Maybe if you want to try to check with some type of an independent testing agency like the National Sanitation Foundation. And lastly, what do you do if your water has low mineral content as most municipal water does and if it has zero mineral content as it will have if you've treated it with a reverse osmosis or distillation? There are a number of things you can do. The simplest maybe is just to add some type of a natural mineral supplement. If you want, you can put in a natural chelating agent also like fulvic acid, which is a natural chelating agent we don't really get in the modern diet anymore. Um, that miner remineralizes the water and you should be able to taste an improvement. Another thing native societies often do if they have low mineral content water is just to make some type of herbal tea out of it most of the time and that 
adds especially a lot of trace minerals to the water. Now if all that sounds like a lot of trouble, one simple thing to do is just have spring water delivered to your home. Check first that it's a low fluoride spring water. Um, none of them will have chlorine added and make sure it has a high mineral content and that it's not pumped out from an aquifer directly under the city as is generally a problem in Los Angeles. But you can get very high quality natural spring water delivered to your home for a couple dollars a day. There's a big difference though between natural spring water and most of the bottled water that you get either delivered to your home or what you buy in the store because most bottled water is just treated by reverse osmosis or distillation or condensation and you can treat water that way in your home and again the issue is that you then end up with water that's low in mineral content. Um, but at least if you treat it in your home it's less expensive and less trouble than lugging back water from the store which is kept in plastic bottles that have their own issues. So that's more than you probably ever wanted to know about water. I know it's not a big concern for most people, but if you do decide to set up something, at least you only have to do it once and not worry about it anymore.